It's no secret that Razer aren't the most well received in the mechanical keyboard world, especially amongst enthusiasts even though we weren't really the target market in the first place. And it is somewhat warranted, their staple board the Black Widow wasn't a bad board at all to be honest. From what I can see it was mainly the keycap quality which was thin ABS and laser etched which are pretty much as low as you can go with a game move font as well. And of course the non-standard bottom row making it difficult to swap out keycaps for aftermarket ones was a huge deal. However the keyboard design looked fine to me and it had a steel mounting plate with plastic enclosure just like the other reputable brands. And their other boards kind of go along the same lines and all coming with a relatively high price tag. But we all know that Razer is all about that for gamers by gamers mantra and have a solid marketing game and a lot of us feel that there's better options. And that is absolutely true but because they're so dominant in the broader consumer market Often people don't see past them, and that's what a lot of us aren't really comfortable with. Somewhat recently, a Razer representative posted on the Mechanical Keyboard subreddit with a board that they've said follows some of the trends of the enthusiast market. So let's look at that board, the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition. Alright, so in the hands it feels okay with minimal flex as it does have the aluminium plate. However, because it's alu rather than steel, it is a pretty light keyboard coming in at just under 700 grams. First impressions, it looks pretty nice. While it is quite different to their previous boards, it still looks like a razor board to me, but yeah, a very clean design which is so nice to see. However, it does use a floating key design as opposed to a high profile design, so basically the top mounting plate is exposed so there's no top plastic shell which in turn exposes the key switches. And it makes sense for a tournament sort of keyboard, it makes it lighter and just more easier to take around to events and such. The aluminium plate has a nice smooth and even finish with a slight chamfer on the edges so it won't cut you. And the stealth branding is really really nice. I for one think that this logo is very aesthetically pleasing, especially compared to the snake one, and yeah, perfect execution. And then the keycaps, another great improvement. First of all the font or typeface, very clean. And these are pretty thick 1.4mm PBT plastic, and the legends are double shot so they won't fade away. They fixed up the bottom row, so it's a completely standard ANSI layout, so replacing the keycaps with aftermarket sets is now easy as. Looking at the bottom, we have this interesting design. I don't mind it because it's at the bottom and looks quite nice actually. And interestingly, the sticker is the other way around for whatever reason. There's some flip up feet with 6 degrees and 9 degrees labelled. However, the rubber on them is a bit too hard, so they're not very grippy compared to the other big ones, so it does slide around a bit. On the rear we have a USB Type-C port, again a great addition, also meaning that the cable is detachable. Now when it comes to key switches, Razer have been quite experimental over the years. They started with Cherry MX key switches, then moved on to producing switches with Kale, which let's be honest weren't great, but they had a slightly early actuation to target gamers. And then I think they made a move to Greetech after that, which is another Chinese switch manufacturer, Again, shorter actuation targeting the gamer market. And now in the Huntsman keyboards, they have their optical key switches, which further goes towards their gamer vision. I have the reds, which are a linear switch, meaning that it has no tactile bump or click, but is also available in the purple clicky. While these do look a bit weird, they still have the MX stem, so just like other light strike key switches that are out and about. And yeah, this shows exactly how they work. We have a light beam, and when the stem blocks it, that's when the actuation happens. Simple. Whereas on a normal key switch, we have two middle contacts that hit and make that actuation. So we do remove those internal contacts, so less moving parts, and they state that there's close to no debounce delay. Don't know how much of a difference it makes, I find standard key switches to be plenty fast enough in regards to that. For me, it's all about the weight and actuation distance that allows for faster actions, especially repetitive actions. So it does have a reduced actuation distance at only 1mm on the linears, and these are quite light key switches at 40 grams, which is lighter than a Cherry MX Red. So yeah, very light and you feel that shorter travel, and for that reason it did feel quite good for gaming, 
As always, everyone is different, but the lightness and shorter travel does make actions feel that touch easier and faster. Even I sometimes feel a bit sluggish on say Cherry MX Blues and get fatigued easier because there's more to each key press. The quantitative difference may not be much, but personally I think the feel is more important. If you feel faster, you feel faster. But when it comes to typing, it's not my sort of thing. I'm more prone to typos because of the low actuation distance and the weight. Kind of like how people are with Cherry MX Reds. It doesn't take much to press the other keys when typing. And yeah, I just prefer something a bit heavier and to get more feel out of the keyboard. They are, however, very smooth. Some of the smoothest stock switches I've felt, and I felt that with the Gateron optical key switches as well, just super smooth and enjoyable to use. But because of the simplified switch internals paired with the bare bones case, so just the aluminium plate, there's not much depth to the key feel. It's not hollow feeling, it's just very thin. Difficult to describe, but it's like opposite to Thocky, and I guess the sound helps in trying to imagine how it feels. This is super loud. The bottom out is hard, thin as said, and it sounds like a gun when you're typing fast. Another super important part of a mechanical keyboard are the stabilizers. They're pretty good. They're not perfect, and there is a bit of rattle, but the rattle is quite minimal. And this really does sum it up. Razer keyboards are heavily targeted towards gamers. I personally feel that their earlier boards didn't really have anything gamer specific, but over the years, they've reached this point where they've created what I think is an actual gaming keyboard, while also picking up some trends from the mech community. So let's look at what's good. 10 keyless is a good size for gaming, more mouse space and easier to carry around. The overall design aesthetic is very clean. Floating key design may not be for everyone, but it makes it lighter and easier to carry. The layout has been fixed, so standard keycap sizes and said keycaps are now thick double shot PBT plastic with a clean font. There's a detachable USB type C connection. And lastly, the key switches I feel are a gamer switch, very fast feeling, but not the best for typing in my opinion. So there's a lot right with this keyboard and it is a unique keyboard in the market. There's other boards with optical key switches, but not in this sort of clean package. Looking at their other boards, I do think that this may be their best one overall as a whole, but it's clearly not for everyone. I wouldn't get this because I'm not that hardcore of a gamer where all this stuff matters, because the performance differences are very small and you have to be in that high percentile to potentially benefit. Because will it make me better over using my Singer V3 with Gatoron Ink Yellows? No, probably not. And I value key feel and the build of a keyboard more than potential performance anyway, because it is a very light and insubstantial sort of board where it's not about satisfaction, just performance. So I prefer a heavier board with that satisfying typing experience, which I feel this doesn't come close to say a Leopold for a retail example. So can you get a better board for the same price of 130 USD? Yes, absolutely, but it won't deliver what this delivers. I also didn't touch on the whole Razer Synapse stuff, but it's pretty fleshed out and has a lot of other features that work with other products as well. I am impressed with this keyboard though, and just going over everything, there's nothing wrong with it, right? There's no real negatives, and they fix a lot of things. It's just not my type of keyboard, and the same will be for many others, because we all like different things. <laughs> <laughs>